here. I'm the uh, cloud developer. And in this today uh, uh, office hour, I will talk about the uh, basic functions of the CLAM 2K. And then we talk about more about the uh, nematic recognition model building. So probably you already download the CLAM. It's available as a zip package. You just download and zip, double click to run. And uh, here's the primary interface. Uh, where you can explore the CLAM website, some tutorial videos, documentation, and also uh, easy reporting. So if you say go to workbench here, and uh, this will be uh, the primary interface. So uh, there are different components here. Uh, on the left corner, we have a component view which contains the machine learning components, the NLP components. So these are like the building blocks of the NLP functions and the machine learning model development. In the NLP component, we have uh, all these NLP functions, for example, split the notes into sentence, sentence detector, or the assertion classifier, which will recognize negation information, and the concept mapping component here, which will uh, map the entity from the nodes to a uh, standard concept ID, like the Umulus QEs or RxNorm concept ID for medications. So if you are building the machine learning model from scratch, then we have the machine learning components here. Currently, uh, it has a nematic recognition features, it has a classification features. So. The classification features will come in our, our future release. It's not in our current release. So the name entity feature, uh, name entity recognition features is it it's uh, useful when you build the machine learning model for concept recognition from the nodes. So there are different kinds of the feature extractors. Uh, we will cover more detail when we start to train the machine learning model. And then on the left down here, I have the pipeline view. In the pipeline view, it has two parts. One is called my pipeline. That's where you develop your own LP pipelines. And there's other pipeline library. It's like the preview pipeline from the CLAM. So you can take a look at the pipeline library, see if uh, some of these pipeline are similar to our NLP task. If it's similar, just drag from a pipeline library, drag and drop to my pipeline. This will unzip it, and then you will see the this pipeline from a pipeline library. So for example, smoking status, if you are working on similar problems, then take a look at the pipeline library the one in the pipeline library. It has uh, several components, uh, sentence detector, tokenization, post tagging, and it has a diction lookup. In the diction, in the dictionary, it has a list of these smoking related keywords. You can keep adding more words into this dictionary based on your uh, input data. So also have uh, assertion, identification, which will tell you if the patient uh, quit smoking or doesn't smoke, negation information. And, uh, also, there's a dictionary of uh, these uh, negation phrases, which is also customizable based on your own input data. And uh, we have the router script here. So, Actually, that's an example how to use the rule engine inside the CLAM. We have several of these demos. You can try to comment some of them and open some of them, see the output. So this part is about the pipeline development. And then the other part in the corpus view, that's about the corpus annotation and the machine learning model development. 
So we will try a uh, corpus annotation and then develop a, a machine learning model here to demonstrate this function in CLAMP. Uh, we can create a new project and select the corpus annotation here. So, oh, by the way, if you have uh, any questions, feel free to stop me. So, Copper's annotation. So from this new project wizard, I define the new project, which is Copper's annotation project. And you see the project structure here. It has a folder to uh, for all the text nodes. And then it has a folder for the machine learning models. And it has a tab define XML where you can define what kind of entity you want to annotate or you want to recognize from the chaining coppers. So we will start from the tab definition here. In the tab definition, you have a chance to uh, define entities. Right click on this entity, add a new entity type. So basically you can define any semantic types here. I'll try the uh, problem treatment. And uh, test. So of course you can define other types like the protein name, gene name, uh, chemical name. Whatever you define here, you will be able to annotate them in the clinical notes. So let me add one more, maybe. Add one more severity. That's how they define the entities. And uh, sometimes the uh, semantic information hierarchy and we may, might be complicated. So in CLAMP, we also support the subtabs. For example, in this problem, under this problem, you can define a uh, something else, maybe diagnosis. So then this will be a child concept uh, under this problem. And similarly, you can define other subtypes here. And in the tab at define XML, you can also define relationships, say right click, new relation type, and uh, it, when define the relationship, there's a kind of simple dialogue here. So it will ask for a relation name, say severity of, and the directions of this uh, relation. So what kind of entity could this relation come from? And uh, what kind of entities to can this relation go to? So we define our relation name severity of and with this entity, this relation could come from the severity entity and uh, it can be connected to either problem or subtype of this problem. So in this way, we can define relationships. Severity of it could from a severity to a problem or diagnosis. So after we finalize this type definition, type define XML, next step will be import some data into this training folder. So you can copy some text data from outside of CLAM. And then right click, paste them to the CLAM folder. So now I have several of these uh, text files and double click on one. You may notice that the CLAM will, will convert the text file into XMI file directly, automatically. When you double click, it convert. So by convert text file to XMI, CLAM is running some pre-processing here. And if you uh, go to the display option on the right side, you see after double click, it has the token information and the sentence information. 
which is useful to build a machine learning model. And then based on, on top of this XML file, we can start to annotate. For example, maybe we using this one as a test. And uh, basically when you do the annotation, it's like select something and then assign a semantic type. So I just randomly select something and assign type to show the option here. That's how to annotate the that's how to annotate the entities. And for the relationship, maybe yeah, let's also randomly select something. So for the relationship, suppose uh, this is a severity, this is a diagnosis. For the relationships, you just drag from this uh, severity to this diagnosis. And then there will be a pop-up menu here, say there is a severity of relationship. So this is how to uh, annotate the corpus using CLAM. It, they, it's quite straightforward. Uh, and you have to uh, annotate, keep annotating until maybe for a reasonable performed machine learning model, there will be at least hundreds of the training nodes. It also depends on the task itself. So yeah. Keep annotating until you have a reasonable size of the training data. So uh, let me show how to train the machine learning model after the annotation, and then we can switch back to talk about how to accelerate the training process using pre-annotation or some other tricks. So we can take a look at uh, another project where I have all these annotation finished. So in this folder, I have about uh, hundreds of these uh, clinical notes, all problem treatment tests are highlighted. And then so after the corpus annotation is ready, next step will be select this training folder and then click the train model icon. Click this one. Then this will be a custom, uh, dialogue for customization of the uh, AR model development. So there's a place to define the name of the model. By default, it will be model plus a timestamp. And then uh, there will be a location of the training corpus, which is the location of this training folder. And also, it has a list of these features. So by default, I'll select all of them. So uh, CLAMP used the CRF as a backend algorithm in the name and recognition. Uh, as a result, it will be sensitive to the human created features like all the feature extractor here. So if you're familiar with the feature engineering part, you can fine tune each and uh, every of these feature extractors. Most of them come with uh, parameters. For example, there's a diction lookup feature, which will take a dictionary as input and then use the result of diction lookup as features to train the machine learning model. Uh, if you don't familiar with these, just uh, leave all these uh, feature extractor selected. Generally, it will give you a reasonable performance when you recognize the clinical concept. So all these features are like prov proved to be eff effective uh, by the CLAMP team. So um, we developed this uh, CLAMP software based on the related work with all these NLP challenges we had participated. Most of these uh, we ranked number one, number two, for example, the uh, adverse drug invent uh, recognition challenge in 2016, we ranked number one here. And the most updated one, the uh, 
and to C2 share tasks to recognize the medication modifiers for entities, we rank the second. And uh, for the relationships, we rank the first. And also there's a, okay. So basically um, most of these challenge, we will use uh, all of these features, all subset of these features to um, optimize the performance. Of course, now we are also using the deep learning based approach. So yeah, anyway, so in this uh, clamp GUI here, yeah, you can you can use them all or customize it if you're familiar with it. And if it's only for test purpose, see if uh, everything runs okay, I would recommend you just uh, select one feature dislike all the others. In this way, the machine learning model will train quickly because it only use one feature. That way you will know if everything is runnable. So that's about the feature engineering part. And also uh, at the bottom, I have a evaluation configuration here. There are two evaluation methods supported in the GAM GUI. One is use the individual test set. The other one is use the cross validation here. So uh, if you save maybe 10% uh, of your uh, overall coppers as a test set, then you can use this test set. Or you can save all these training coppers in the training set and then evaluate performance use cross validation. You see the coppers annotation, it's really time consuming. We want to make best use of the training coppers, then save them all. I mean, build the final model using all the training coppers, but evaluate the performance, use the cross validation here. Yeah, and that's how to uh, customize the machine learning model, select these features. And uh, for, okay. So after you configure it, this dialog, simply click finish here, the machine learning model will start to train. If you take a look at the progress, it start to it start from extracting features and then run the CRF toolkit here, which runs very fast because uh, I only use one feature here. So you see the iteration goes from one all the way to several hundreds and see the loss is really drop, keep dropping. And then you yeah, just let it run. If you took it, take a look at the progress, you see there are some other training process waiting here. That's for the file for cross validation. That's a uh, training for four zero for one all the way to four four. So, and in the progress bar here, we have a rest stop button here where you can cancel the training process. Yeah, you see the overall, the, the big model is finished. Now the clamp is running on the fold one. Okay. Let's see. So after the model training, you will find the output under this uh, models folder. So it contains several things in this folder. First of all, there will be a model chart file. That's the final machine learning model you trained using the clamp GUI. You can copy this one and then to uh, the pipeline you want to apply this machine learning model. Then go to the name recognition Place our model here. Oh, it's training. Okay, we can solve it. So after copy paste a model is in the right place, you can simply uh, change the configuration. Double click on this config conf and then switch the model file. It's there a different model file here. So after we switch from the default model to the new model, train from these coppers, actually your uh, 
recognize something else based on the chaining coppers, but not on the clamp default one. And the training folder it contains something else. Let's double click on, take a look at this uh, feature file. So if you're familiar with the uh, CRF and the sequential labeling algorithm, this format will be uh, straightforward. So the first column is just the BIO tag and the semantic information. All the following column, that's the features. Feature, but in string format. So, as you can see in this example, it only several columns because we only select one feature to make it run faster. And if you select all the features, this line will be uh, very long, contains at least more than 100 columns. And we have a training log file, basically it contains every information from the training process, uh, including how to split the unfold and the uh, information from the CRF toolkit, the loss. And if we go down to the end, it will show an evaluation result. So in this evaluation result, we can see uh, this corpus, we have a problem treatment test, three type of semantics, and then that's the count of each entities. For example, the treatment in the uh, annotation, there's a 564 entities, and the predict is 400 something. And uh, uh, the overlap between predict and gold standard, it's right here. So based on these numbers, we can calculate the precision, the recall, and the F score for each of these semantic types. You see the performance here, 72, something, 78. It's not, not that high because remember, we only use one feature here, right? If we select all the features, these performance should be a higher 80 something. Then, in this model Apple, we also have an Apple folder contains some of these XMI file. So this is a place to design for the error analysis. For most of the time, you see a performance in the log file. It tells you 60, 70 something, and then you want to see the patterns of the errors, see what's wrong with the machine learning model. And we can use the files under this Apple folder. Double click to open one. You see now there are some overlap annotations, right? The, for example, this one, it's uh, annotate as a test and also predict by the machine learning as a test. Uh, so in other words, the machine learning algorithm did a great job here. I predict this test correctly. So every time you see there's a completely overlap, that means a true positive. So however, sometimes you may notice something like here. This one doesn't annotate as a treatment, but it's a predict by the machine learn learning algorithm as a treatment, right? So the machine, it's 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 a false positive here the machine learning made a mistake and similar here so i guess in this case uh i don't know it depends on the annotation guideline because the surgery something doesn't belong to any patient it's just a general mention of the service and uh something here predict this one but uh annotate with this bilaterally that's also a judgment about the annotation guideline if you want to annotate the modifiers like this, right? So this part is for the error analysis of machine learning algorithm. You may summarize some patterns of these errors, say you see some missing part. When you see some missing part, you can uh, go back to the machine learning training part and try to customize the features to improve the machine learning prediction. 
and sometimes maybe you see uh, the machine learning did good job, but uh, yeah, the machine learning make a good prediction, but uh, actually uh, something is missing or something is wrong from the human annotation. So in that case, you can go back to the uh, corpus folder, try to find that file, and then crack that that error from the medical expert. So the uh, model development is really as like an iteration. Uh, you have to keep refining your annotation guideline and uh, refine all the annotation training covers and then uh, try to improve machine learning model performance by feature engineering. So keep annotating and refining then until you get the rhythm of perform the machine learning model. And once you are satisfied or finalized with this model, just copy paste this model to the pipeline and uh, let it work with other uh, clamp, clamp components. So that's how to develop the machine learning model. Uh, so far, is there any questions? Uh, you can tap the question to the chat box. I can see that too, or just uh, describe the question. Um, I have a question. Right. Um, when I try to train um, the corpus, um, mm -hmm. I don't like uh, the new model that will be created. I don't have the uh, all those trained. Uh, files and the model itself, like the one that shows the prediction. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to build their own model. Uh, yes, I, I, I try to create um, my own um, uh, corpus model and it's training well, uh, but I don't see all the prediction by the model. All what so I have. You didn't I can see anything see. under this model file, models folder? I, I saw that I have the training feature, I have a training log, mm -hmm. um, I um, I can see the model dot jar, mm -hmm. uh, fold one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. but I don't see that output, like those files that, yeah, I don't see those files I that, yeah. I don't see in this output folder, right? I don't, yeah, I don't have that in my output folder. So how long does it take to train the machine learning model? Is there any kind of errors? Uh, I did not get any kind of errors and um, I actually use the model in the pipeline and it's working, it's working fine, but it's not um, annotating as I'm expecting. So you mean after you complete the model file into the pipeline, it's still not working, right? Yes, it is working, but it's not annotating as what I'm expecting it to annotate. Okay, so I guess there's um, something wrong with the model development. Maybe um, can you share me a screenshot or something. Let me take a look at the training covers if there is some annotation and then uh, I can further assist you with this problem. Uh, okay, well, can I do that after the meeting? Yes, right. Okay. Uh, awesome. You can Thank give me you. an email. Do you have um, my email address? You yes, I, I do. Okay, yes, I do. cool. Thank you so much. Sure. So, uh, okay, if there's no questions, we can go ahead and talk about the pre-annotation stuff, how to accelerate the training coppers, the coppers annotation part. So let me close them all. And we can clean this project a little bit. Yeah. So what I showed just now is build the coppers from scratch. There's no any pre annotation or pre-processing. 
nothing else, just uh, copy the notes and start to annotate. But for most of the time, we will try to at least some kind of pre-annotation, let the NLP do some work, and then the domain expert will review the NLP output and then uh, correct it if there are some kind of errors. So in that way, we can try to build a pre-annotation pipeline here uh, and then run this pipeline, copy the output, examine my file, I mean, to this training folder. So probably let's use, let's use the example, this example here. So, we can copy all these uh, nodes they want to annotate and then paste them to uh, the pre-annotation pipelines, paste them to the input folder, and then run this pipeline. So, seemingly I already have the output, so I don't run. Then after run the pre-annotation pre pipeline, you may get all these XML files. So you can copy this XML file and then paste to the corpus annotation project directly. After you place this uh, corpus annotation project into this folder, there's a chance to annotate it. If there is something wrong, you can delete it or annotate something else. So that's one way of the pre-annotation. And uh, I'm using the machine learning based pipeline here. Actually, you can um, build another straightforward pre-annotation pipeline. Let's try it, pre-annotate. Create the pre-annotation pipeline. So sometimes we want to annotate, I mean, highlight uh, based on a keyword list or white list. So for example, in the smoking status example, we, want, we have a collection of all these uh, smoking related keywords. We just want to highlight every occurrence of these keywords in the notes, right? In that case, we can build a diction lookup based pre-annotation pipeline. So we just create a new pipeline. This time go to the name entity recognition and then choose the diction lookup, drag and drop to this uh, pipeline, see there are some dependency issues, try to auto fix it. Now this pipeline is just to have a sentence detector, tokenizer, and a diction lookup here. So in the diction lookup, we have a default dictionary, which is like a, a collection of uh, a collection of uh, uh, all clinical terms or words, which is gener generated excuse me, from the umless. So we can clean that. And then let me try with the uh, smoking dictionary. Yeah. So you may have a, your own keyword list, but in this example, I will try to use the smoking keyword. Uh, basically, if you want to run the diction look, lookup, the format of this dictionary is uh, quite straightforward. It's just two columns. The first column is the medical term or keyword itself. The second column is the semantic types, the type of the uh, of this uh, medical term. So in this example, if I see the non-smoker word, I would think that's uh, 
semantic type is non-smoker. And uh, if I see some history, former, past, quit, then I think that's a sign of the history keyword. So that's the uh, one pre annotation pipeline. And then still we can copy some notes. into this pre-annotation pipeline and then run it. This one is super fast because it's simple like diction lookup, no machine learning involved. Oh, you see now it will try to highlight the concept based on the dictionary. Yeah. So still after this diction lookup, you can use all the uh, diction lookup output as a pre-annotation, copy this XMI file from the output folder, and then place it here. I already have the same name. Uh, I think I see some message. So I see a message from team in the demo, you use the cross validate five. Is there any special reason about fivefold or just a reasonable default? I guess it's just a reasonable default. Um, the dialog there is disabled, but I can simply open that or use a you know drop down. You can choose five or ten or something. The 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 fivefold, I guess it's just a reasonable default here. And is there a way to use regular expressions while cards matching in the dictionary? So in the dictionary itself, uh, we don't have a regular expression, but if you take a look at the component here, we have a regular expression based on recognition. So similarly, if you want to use reg regular expression, drag and drop this one too. So in this reg regular expression based one, it's similar like the dictionary lookup. It has two columns. The first one is regular ex expression. The second column is a semantic type. This one is useful when you try to uh, recognize like the dosage of medication or the, the test of values, basically numbers. Uh, and two columns separated by a tab here. So then you can use diction lookup plus the regular expression to build the pre annotation. And another thing I can mention is the in the diction lookup, although it's there is no wild card or something, but we have a stemming here. You can click this stemming, then it will try to match some variations. Like you add the smoke in the dictionary, it will match the smokes, smoke, the smoking all these different forms of the same word. So check this stemming if you need some kind of fuzzy match on your uh, diction lookup. Okay, so you see the idea if we can uh, keep drag and dropping to build a, a, a more complicated NLP pipeline, but it's just for pre-annotation. After run the NLP, you can uh, always review the output by uh, move these files into the corpus project and then define some kind of uh, semantic information or what kind of entity you want to annotate and then review these. <coughs> so this part is about to use the NLP pipeline as a pre-annotation. Uh, any question, discussion on this part? Okay. So in the last demo, I will show the online learning 
uh, functions or clamp. So I'll use this example here. So what I just showed is uh, you have to run the NLP pipeline here and then uh, copy paste these files, move these files into the coppers and you can only do that once, right? And the online learning feature, it's like uh, uh, I will keep, keep updating the machine learning model while you're adding new training coppers. So I'll use one example. Let me clean this project a little bit. Let me open one. So in this uh, project, uh, I want to annotate something like these. These are like uh, item hiders or some of them is uh, section hiders. So keep annotating these. Right. Uh, let me copy one. Yeah. So you see the task is try to uh, annotate all these atom hiders. This is helpful when you try to extract this uh, information followed by the atom hider. Some of them can serve as a section hiders. So it's quite straightforward. And what we can do is uh, select training folder, open this, uh, enable the pre-annotation in this text. Actually, that means the online learning process. So, oh, I already have something ready. <coughs> so the idea here is, uh, let me remove that. The idea here is uh, after you enable the online learning, it will have a status on each of these files. The green means this file is finalized. It is ready to be added to the machine learning model. And the red files means it's not ready, we're still working on it. And uh, after you have this uh, one file ready, right click, add this one to the finalized list after you add to the finalized list, the clamp will start to train the machine learning model immediately using what we have in the final list. And next time we will open new one. It's, it's not from scratch. We just double click on the text file. And this time, all these come with a pre-annotation. See pre-atom hider, that means the, 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 the annotation from the machine learning. So you can, try to say, okay, this is a real atom hider, this is a real atom hider. Oh, if there are some missing, I didn't see any missing in this case, so it looks all good to me. If it looks all good, then we have a button here, say accept all. So, I don't know if you noticed, uh, just when we accept all the pre-annotation result, the machine learning training process start immediately. So now in our finalized list, we have these two files and the machine learning model is trained based on these two files, the green files. So if we keep updating, accept all, then this one will be added to the finalized list too. So the idea is really try to, you know, keep adding the training coppers in real time, and then we keep updating machine learning model so that the pre-annotation on the remaining of these text files will be more and more accurate. So that's the idea of the online learning. Does that sound make sense to you? Yeah.
right. Is, is this feature of this pre-annotation um, avail available in previous versions of CLAMP, or when was it integrated? Uh, is that Heidi speaking? Hello? Hi. It, um, is it in 15? Is, is, the, um, is this feature in 15 version? So you mean the, the, the sound and learning part, if it's uh, in our current version? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's in our current version. Yeah, and, so, well, so is, is it in version 15 or is that? Uh, it's our online version. I, I believe it's uh, 1.5.1. 1. Oh, okay. It's only uh, even 1.5.0 1. 1. Uh, come with the pre-annotation features. Is it incorporated in the desktop version? What, 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 what's that? I can barely hear you. Is it also incorporated into the, um, the standalone version? The standalone version? Uh, I think that the, the Clamp GUI version will have that functions, but the command line version don't have that. If you're talking about the Clamp GUI, then yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's the uh, two part about the Corpus annotation, I want to talk about the pre annotation here or use the online learning uh, in the Corpus project itself. So, after Corpus annotation, train the model, copy the model to the pipeline. And then, once you finalize this pipeline, you can right click, say export everything I develop as a jar file. And then you can run this jar file it's a standalone one you can run this jar file on linux server or use that to connect to database precise large tables uh, using the clamp command line version okay so the gui is like a development environment for both coppers annotation model training pipeline development and then after that after the nlp development export this one then Go with the command line version for executions. Yeah, I think that's all the content I want to demo today. Any uh, further questions or discussions? Yeah, sure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.